Long Island Sound is a tidal estuary of the Atlantic Ocean, lying between the eastern shore of Bronx County, New York City, the southern shores of Westchester County in Connecticut, and the northern shore of Long Island. The Sound stretches 110 miles from the East River in New York City eastward along the north shore of Long Island to Block Island Sound a mix of fresh water from tributaries and salt water from the ocean. Long Island Sound is 21 miles at its widest point and varies in depth from 65 to 230 feet. Shoreline Several major cities are situated along Long Island Sound and more than 8 million people live within its watershed. Major Connecticut cities on the Sound include Bridgeport, New London, Stamford, Norwalk, and New Haven. Cities on the New York side of the Sound include Rye, Glen Cove, New Rochelle, and portions of Queens and the Bronx in New York City mansions and wealthy neighborhoods characterize a good portion of the coast of the Sound from Port Jefferson and East on Long Island, and from Pelham Manor in New Rochelle to Madison in Connecticut. Property values in Westchester County, Long Island, and southwestern Connecticut are among the highest in the nation. Due to the proximity to New York City and their location on the Sound, climate and geography, glacial history about 18,000 years ago, Connecticut, Long Island Sound, and much of Long Island were covered by a thick sheet of ice. Part of the late Wisconsin Glacier, about 3,300 feet thick in its interior and about 1,300 to 1,600 feet thick along its southern edge, it was the most recent of a series of glaciations that covered the area during the past 10 million years. Sea level at that time was about 330 feet lower than today. The continental ice sheet scraped off an average of 65 feet of surface material from the New England landscape, then deposited the material from the Connecticut coast into the Sound, creating what is now Long Island. When the ice sheet stopped advancing 18,000 years ago, a large amount of drift was deposited, known as the Ronkonkoma Moraine, which stretches along much of southern Long Island. Later, another period of equilibrium resulted in the Harbour Hill Moraine along most of northern Long Island. The next moraines to the north were created just on and off the Connecticut coast. These moraines, created by much smaller deposits, are discontinuous and much smaller than those to the south. The Connecticut coast moraines are in two groups, the Norwalk area and the Madison Old Saybrook area. Sandy plains and beaches resulted from the erosion of moraines and redeposition in these areas, and to the east of each, where the drift cover is thinnest, exposed bedrock creates rocky headlands, often with marshlands behind them. The Captain Islands off Greenwich, Connecticut, along with the Norwalk Islands and Faulkner Island off Guilford, Connecticut are parts of a recessional moraine. Other islands, including the Thimble Islands, are for the most part exposed bedrock with a thin amount of drift, often not continuous. Other shoals and islands off the Connecticut coast are a mixture of these two extremes. The glacier also created several sandy outwash deltas off the coast, including one off Bridgeport, Connecticut and another off New Haven, Connecticut. Fishes Island, New York appears to be related to the Harbor Hill Moraine. To the east of the Thimble Islands, inland moraines along the Connecticut coast include the Broken Madison Moraine and the Old Saybrook Moraine. The Long Island Sound Basin existed before the glaciers came. It probably had been formed by stream flows. A relatively thick cover of sand and gravel was left in the basin from glacial meltwater streams. On the west, a ridge rising to about 65 feet below the present sea level is called the Matatuck Sill. Its lowest point is about 80 feet below sea level. Glacial meltwater formed Lake Connecticut, a freshwater lake in the basin, until about 8,000 years ago, when the sea level rose to about 80 feet below today's level. Seawater then overflowed into the basin, transforming it from a non-tidal freshwater lake to a tidal saline arm of the sea. Rivers Numerous rivers empty into the sound, including Connecticut Connecticut River, Old Saybrook, 
Housatonic River, Stratford and Milford, Meanis River, Greenwich, Mill River, New Haven, Mill River, Fairfield, Norwalk River, Norwalk, Pequinock River, Bridgeport, Quinnipiac River, New Haven, Rooster River, Ash Creek, Bridgeport and Fairfield, Ripowam River, Stamford, Saugatuck River, Westport, Thames River, Groton and New London, West River, West Haven, New York, Birram River, Port Chester, Hutchinson River, the Bronx, Mamaroneck River, Mamaroneck, Fauna and Flora, Flora seaweed Seaweeds in the sound occur in greatest abundance in rocky areas between high tide and low tide as well as on rocks on the sea floor. Green seaweed populations fluctuate with the seasons. Monostroma reproduces in the early spring and dies out by late summer. Grinea appears in August and disappears four to six weeks later. In the rocky areas of the intertidal zone there are the seaweeds, which are characterized by their brown tone, Fucus and Ascophyllum, some species of which have air bladders that allow them to float and receive direct sunlight even at high tide. Also present are Ectocarpus and red algas Polysiphonia, Neosiphonia, Porphyra and Chondrus. In the marshy areas of the intertidal zone can be found Cladophora, Ulva and Codium. In the subtidal zone are Palmaria palmata a red alga, along with two algae, Laminaria and Corda. Kelp can often be found washed up on the beach, and individual specimens are not uncommonly a yard or two long. Deeper in the subtidal zone are red algae such as Spermothamnion, Antithamnion and Calathamnion, which also often float freely. In tidal pools can be found red or pink-colored Phymatolithon, which can often encrust rocks and mollusk shells. Also present are green algae, including Ulothrix, Cladophora, and Ulva. Plants found in tidal marshes Tidal marshes are some of the most productive biological systems in the world. Along the sound, they produce 3 to 7 tons per acre per year of vegetation, largely in the form of salt marsh grasses. Much of this, enriched by decomposition, is flushed yearly into the estuary water where it directly contributes to the great finfish and shellfish production of the sound. Salt marsh plants salt water cord grass grows along ditches and on the seaside edges of marshes where high tides daily inundate it. Salt meadow cord grass and spike grass grow in areas less frequently inundated by salt water, typically closer to dry land. A short form of salt water cord grass can sometimes be found in the depressions in the higher areas where salt water collects and evaporates leaving water even higher in salinity than seawater. Other plants in the Panis are sea lavender, salt marsh aster, seaside gerardia, and some species of glasswort. Plants found near the border of the marsh with the upland include bayberry and ground sultry shrubs, switchgrass, reeds and marsh elder, a shrub growing where the highest monthly tides reach. Cattail marshes in areas where the sound salt water is more diluted with fresh water from rivers, mostly below low tide, often forming large meadows. Eel grass roots help stabilize muddy sediments and can trap moving sand, helping prevent erosion. The leaves, that can range in size from less than 1 meter to 2 meters long, slow currents providing calm environments for many species of mollusks and other invertebrates. Eel grass is also an important food source for waterfowl, especially brant, a type of goose. As of the late 1970s, the plant was fairly common on the Connecticut shore, but in the 1930s it was nearly wiped out by a mold infection called eel grass wasting disease. Much of the mollusk and brant populations suffered steep declines. Eel grass slowly recolonized and by the late 1970s had still not fully recovered. The disease reoccurs periodically. Plants found on beaches and dunes Few undisturbed beach and dune systems exist on the Connecticut shore. The ones that do are located along the eastern portion of the coastline. Sea rocket and dune grass occur here, but not in abundance. Dune grass and plants that thrive on dunes are largely responsible for the creation and growth of the dunes. 
On the seaward side of dunes can be found Lathrus japonicas, Dusty Miller, and seaside goldenrod. Other beach plants are orich, beach clotbur, seaside spurge, and jimson weed. On the more protected landward side of dunes are beach plum, bayberry, and beach rose. Rare species found on the landward side are beech knotweed and sand false heather. Upland vegetation in areas next to the shoreline but hardly ever salty. The sound's environment can nevertheless be a crucial factor in the presence of certain species. Areas near the Connecticut shore are the northern limit for some species needing the warmer environment provided by proximity to the sound. These include sweet gum, the American holly, post oak and persimmon, which only exist in Connecticut along the shore. For many species which grow typically in sandy soils, the Connecticut shore is the northern limit. Mature upland vegetation along the Connecticut coast is mostly hardwood forests, with dominant tree species including oaks and hickories, especially white oak, black oak, pignut hickory and mockernut hickory. Other trees include sassafras, black gum, and black cherry. Mature trees tend to be sparse in coastal forests, likely because of their greater exposure to the wind. This results in more sunlight reaching the forest floor, encouraging a jungle-like tangle of vines and shrubs, including the vines catbriar, poison ivy, bramble and bittersweet, and the shrubs blueberry, huckleberry, viburnum and hazelnut. Along with the moderate climate, rare coastline storms can have an important impact on observable vegetation patterns. The greatest storms to hit the sound in the 20th century were the 1938 hurricane, the 1955 hurricane, Hurricane Bell in 1976, Hurricane Gloria in 1985, and Hurricane Irene in 2011. After Hurricane Bell, leaves near the coast were badly salt burned, then turned brown and shriveled. Many trees were downed by the storm, leaving openings in the forest cover, promoting the growth of vines and shrubs. Fauna of fish The sound is inhabited by both marine fish and anadromous fish. The most common marine fish in the sound include porgy, butterfish, winter flounder, summer flounder, windowpane flounder, forespot flounder, northern and striped sea robin, little skate, menhaden, Atlantic silversides, black sea bass, blackfish, cunner, bluefish, and smooth dogfish. Frequently Atlantic bonito and false albacore, both members of the tuna family, enter the sound and can be caught by anglers from small boats and shore. Many species have declined rapidly since 1975 due to overfishing. Winter flounder may not be currently present except for rare, small local populations. Tortog and summer flounder are also less numerous. Anadromous fishes include striped bass, white perch, alewives, blue bark herring, and American and hickory shad. Although several shark species likely infrequently wander in and out of the sound, e.g., blue shark, mako shark, hammerhead shark, and thresher shark, there are only four species of sharks which are regularly found in the area. These are the sand tiger shark, the sandbar shark, the spiny dogfish and the smooth dogfish. Mollusks Mollusks that can be found include the rough periwinkle near the high tide line, the European periwinkle, the northern yellow periwinkle, the blue mussel, the eastern oyster, the Atlantic slipper shell or common slipper shell, the hard clam, the Atlantic bay scallop, the mud snail, the salt marsh snail, the Atlantic oyster drill, the northern moon snail, Atlantic moon snail, the channeled and knobbed whelks. Crustacea Crustaceans include crabs, shrimp and lobsters. In the sound there are the green crab, blue crab, red crab, Jonah crab in deep water areas, and the Atlantic rock crab, which settles in large numbers along rocky shores, especially around Millstone Point, Neatic Bay and Fishes Island Sound. Other crabs found include the lady crab, spider crabs, and fiddler crabs, hermit crabs and mole crabs are also found. 
By the late 1980s, the Japanese shore crab, an invasive species, was the most commonly found crab in the sound. The sand shrimp Krangon septem spinosa and two species of grass shrimp are plentiful along the shore, especially in late summer and fall. The American lobster is fished commercially. Mammals, a reptiles, and amphibians Most animal species on the Connecticut side of the sound also occur inland, but some are much more abundant along the shore. Animals along the sound are most concentrated in the salt marshes. Two species of shrews, the masked shrew and the American short-tailed shrew, are common in salt marshes. The least shrew has been thought to exist in small numbers in the salt marshes of western Connecticut. Rodents include the white-footed mouse, the meadow vole and the meadow jumping mouse. Muskrats are heavily trapped but remain abundant. Raccoons and red foxes who live in areas near the marshes will hunt in them. The long-tailed weasel and short-tailed weasel are both found near the sound, occasionally living in the salt marshes. Harbor seals and gray seals can be found among the rocks off Stonington and Groton at the eastern end. Longfin pilot whales and harbor porpoises can also be infrequently sighted in open water, a few miles off the coast. In 1975, a finback whale beached itself in Groton. Animals that need moist woodlands are found in the coastal area, including the diamondback terrapin in salt marshes and brackish waters. Terrapin meat became such a popular delicacy in the early 1900s that the price for a dozen adult females reached as high as $120. Overhunting made the species uncommon and even rare through most of the sound and completely eliminated at some places. After its popularity as food declined, the terrapin population started recovering. Sea turtles occasionally travel north on the Gulf Stream and wander into the sound. The loggerhead turtle, green turtle and leatherback turtle are rarely seen along the Connecticut shore. Other reptiles and amphibians found along the edges of the salt marshes and nearby bodies of water include the green frog, bullfrog, pickerel frog, spotted turtle, painted turtle, northern water snake, and common snapping turtle. On beaches and sandy areas there are fowler's toads, the American toad, and the hognose snake. Birds There are six broad categories of bird habitats near Long Island Sound. Open water areas, including bays, coves, rivers and the sound itself, tidal marshes, mudflats, sandy beaches, offshore islands, and mainland uplands, including woodlands and fields. Some birds are summer residents or winter residents, while others are spring and fall transients. Year-round residents include herring gull, greater black-backed gull, common tern and double-crested cormorant. Much of the tern's habitat and nesting areas have been taken over by the overabundant cormorant over the last several decades. The terns are now not commonly seen. Coastal migrants include shorebirds such as plovers, turnstones, sandpipers, willet and yellowlegs. Summer residents include the seaside sparrow, sharp-tailed sparrow, Nelson's sparrow, clapper rail, mallard and black duck, herons and egrets, including the black-crowned night heron and snowy egret as well as the least tern and piping plover. Upland species include the hooded warbler, white-eyed vireo, eastern meadowlark and Carolina wren. Winter residents include large flocks of ducks, geese, and swans. Winter in the Sound In West Haven, Connecticut, 8,000 scorp were regularly counted in the 1970s. Greater scorp, black ducks, mallards, and Canada geese are the most abundant wintering birds. There are also significant populations of red-breasted merganses, common golden eyes, buffleheads, scotters, American widgeons, canvasbacks. Old squaws and mute swans, rare and endangered species rare, endangered and extinct species of the sound include the eastern spade foot, a rare, toad-like amphibian that hasn't been recorded in the area since 1935. 
Its overall coloring is beige or off-white with a pattern of green markings. Small orange dots punctuate this pattern. As many as 1,500 short-nosed sturgeon, listed as endangered by the Endangered Species Act, inhabit the Connecticut River. Approximately 900 of those live downstream of Holyoke Dam, while short-nosed sturgeon primarily remain in their natal rivers. They will feed in estuarine waters like Long Island Sound and make extended trips along the Atlantic coast, sometime being identified in multiple rivers during their lifetimes.